So this video is going to be on strong induction. Strong induction is uh, an offshoot, well, it's a equivalent form of proof to mathematical induction. Although what it's going to do is it's going to like depend upon the fact that we know that we have not just P of K uh, elements be true, okay, but all of the values between some number and P of K being true. Um, so that we can actually make some more stronger statements, right? And hence why it's called strong induction. It allows us to make a, an even stronger statement than saying that P of K is true. It's actually gonna say, well, we can assume that say one through K is true, okay? And then that'll allow us to expand our range of things that we can actually go out and prove. So let's take a look and um, generally strong induction proofs from a mathematical perspective can sometimes be a bit more challenging and require some more advanced math. What we're going to basically do are we're going to do these kind of like postage pro uh, postage stamp problems or these pro problems that have to do with like making change. Okay, it's uh, you know, like using greedy algorithms, for example. All right, so let's say, for example, I want to know how what different kinds of postage can I make with um, three and t five cent stamps. Okay. So let's just think about what kind of postage I can make with three and five cent stamps. All right. So I can make three cents of postage. Okay. So here's an, the amount of postage. All right. I can make five cents of postage. I can make six cents. That's two threes. I could make eight cents, that's five and a three. I can make nine cents, that's three threes. Okay, I could take, make 10, that's um, two fives. Okay, I could make 11, because that's six over here, plus five. I could make 12, because that's four threes. I could make 13, because that's 10 and three. And you know what? I'm actually gonna contend, all right, that I contend that we can make any amount of postage greater than eight cents. So we've got three, five, six, and then eight cents and above, greater than eight cents. We will prove using strong, strong induction, okay? So our statement is we can make any amount of postage greater than or equal to eight cents of postage using three and five cent stamps. So what I'm gonna start out with is I'm gonna start out with a basis step. And the basis step in strong induction is a little bit different. What happens in the basis step for strong induction is I'm gonna actually prove multiple statements, not just say for example, P of eight, which is the first term, right? But also I'm gonna prove P of nine and P of 10. And the reason why I'm gonna prove P of eight, P of nine and P of 10 is because I've got three cent postage stamps. So if I prove eight, nine and 10, Okay, then I know that I can make 11 because that's eight plus three. And I can know I can make nine because that's nine plus, or I can make 12 because that's nine plus three. And I can make uh, 13 because that's gonna be 10 plus three. Okay, and so on and so on and so forth, just adding three each and every time. So I don't actually have to like think about like all the values. I just need to know that I can make those first three. And then after that fact, right, I just keep iterating by a three. And that's proven, that, that will have proven that I can make any amount of postage bigger than eight using three and five cent stamps, okay? All right, so I'm gonna start out and I'm gonna start out proving P of eight, right? That I can make eight cents of postage. And that's true because that's five cent stamp and a three cent stamp. Then I'm gonna prove P of nine and that's three three cent stamps. And then P of 10, is two five cent stamps. So that's my inductive step. That's actually saying, okay, you know what? I can make these first three, and after that, it's gonna allow me to make any, uh, once I prove that, you know, I can just do the next one, right? It's gonna allow me to prove that uh, I can do any amount greater than or equal to eight. Now my inductive step. I'm gonna assume P of J is true. 
So the statement is true, and this is the strong induction part. For j greater than or equal to 8 and less than or equal to k. Okay? So all the, all the values between 8 and k. Notice that it's not just p of k, the single value. It's going to be all of these values that range between 8 and k. Okay? And we have to make that statement. You're going to see why in just a second. All right? So p of j is going to end up being true. All right? So what that means is that p of k minus 2 is true. All right? And I choose p of k minus 2 because what's going to end up happening is I'm going to add 3 to that, and that's going to prove that p of k plus 1 is true. Okay, so p of k minus 2 is true, then I'll add a 3 cent stamp, okay, and that makes p of k plus 1 true. Notice that we want to prove p of k plus 1 is true, okay, specifically that for k plus 1 cents, we can make postage out of 3 and 5 cent stamps. So p of k minus 2 is true, so k minus 2 cents of postage can be made with 3 and 5 cent stamps, okay. So, by adding one three cent stamp, okay, that's our move. We're going to add one three cent stamp. We make k minus two plus three, which equals k plus one cents of postage. Hence, P of K plus one is true. As K plus one is made out of three and cents and stamps. Three and five cent stamps, excuse me. Thus, our statement is true by strong induction. Ta-da! Okay, so, what we're basically stating is, is we're stating that, um, well, let's assume that for all these values between 8 and k, okay, we don't know what k is, it's okay, we don't need to know. But let's just assume that that's true, 8 all the way up to k. And we know at least it's true for 8, 9, and 10, the first three, which is all we really, really need, okay? So p of k minus 2, 2 is true. So k minus 2 cents of postage, right, can be made. So basically, notice this is 1 less then our smallest postage, okay? So that way, when I add the one three cent stamp, I end up at k plus one, and that actually proves my statement. So let's review. So the first thing that we wanna do is we wanna consider basically what kinds of postage we actually can make. Or sometimes you might actually be told this is the amount of postage that you can make. But in this case, it's three and five cent stamps, okay? And we're gonna make, we're gonna say, oh, well, once I get three in a row, right, that is eight, nine, and 10. Okay, once I get those three in a row, then what I know is I can move on to my inductive step or my basis step, excuse me. My basis step is then just basically to say, okay, you know what, let's do those first three and prove that it's true for those first three, okay? If you had four cent stamps or six cent stamps, you're gonna have to do the first four or the first six, whichever one is the smallest amount of postage. In this case, it's three, okay? That's our smallest amount. Then we move on to the inductive step, and we're gonna assume that first move is to assume that P of J, right, is true. The statement is true for all J in between our lowest value, eight, all the way up through some K, right? So P of K is still true, it's just that we've also made the statement, the stronger statement, hence the name, that all the values from eight to K are in fact true, okay? That allows us to then say that, you know, some amount less than K is true, and then that'll allow us to do our proof, okay? And that's how we prove by strong induction.